Let's tackle this displaying of comments in two parts. First, let's just get the existing comments displaying, and then we'll build something that where someone can add uh, another comment and delete one of the existing ones. That's that's when we're going to get into the reducer. So um, in order to render out the comments, we actually need them. Now, since we have the comments uh, inside of this single component, we can get them from our single and pass them into our uh, comments component right here. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So remember we found the increment in the post. Let's also find the comments for that one. So we're going to make a variable called post comments because the variable comments we've already used over and over. We say this dot props dot comments, and that will give us all of them. See here, this is all of them, but we really only need just whatever the array is for that specific post, which in this case is B A C Y D. So we only need that specific array so we can use square brackets and use the post ID from the URL to reference that. So how do we get the post ID is dot props dot params dot post ID. We're using that twice now. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'll just say const post ID equals this dot props dot params and that will just destructure it out into its own variable and that will allow us to just reference it. it keeps our, our code a little bit neater here. Uh, same with that as well. So that will give us the array, but that's not perfect for every single situation. Why? Because not every uh, one has comments. You can see this one of Snickers. Nobody cares. So there's no comments. So how do we fix that? We can just say or a square uh, array. And what that will do is it first will allow us to loop over nothing um, as well as when we do add our first comment here we're able to push that comment onto that specific array. Now I can go down to our comments component here and pass the post comments to the actual comments component so we can hop over to that component and render them on out. So that's good. We're going to go into here and now we've got all of the different comments showing in here and the way we can see if it's actually working is we could use react dev tools open it up, click on the comments. See, we've got this post comments array here. And you see that we've got all of the data that we want to use. So we need to loop over each of those comments and render it on out. So there's, there's two ways you could go about this. You could create a second component called comment, which is a, just a component that renders out one single comment and renders out the name, the hello and the close button. Or you can use what's called a render function in React, which is you still stay inside of this comments function because it doesn't make sense to to create a second component for it. Uh, but you just create a, a render comment function, which itself will take the comment as well as the index. And that is going to return some JSX itself. So that's what we're going to be doing right here. I'm just going to do console.log comment so we can see that it's working. And then inside of this, what we do is we say this dot props dot post comments. We use map for that. And instead of doing like a function right inside of here, we just say this dot render comment and that will reference this one. So give that a save. Go to your console here and oh, there we go. You see that every time I load the page now, each of the comments is running this render comment function and it's just console logging the actual comment here. But uh, what we actually need is to, to return some JSX, right? So we just got a return function inside of here and that will have a div with a class of comment. And that also needs a key of I for the same reasons we talked about having a key earlier. And we need a paragraph inside of that with a strong tag. Inside of the strong tag, we have comment dot user that will give the comment username, give that a save. Where are we at? Okay, good. We've got everybody's name so far, but we also need uh, the comment itself. So beside that, we're going to put the comment.txt. That will render out good. It's rendering on out. And then finally, we need a button. Let's. We're not going to hook it up to anything just yet, but uh, the button will have an X inside of it. So I'm going to use the times Unicode, uh, and it's going to have a class name of remove-comment. Should now show up. Oh, they are all showing up. And that is because this should be class name of comments with an S on it. And then the CSS will, will show it depending on when you hover a single comment. Good. So that is now showing up. But what we need as well is this author comment form right here. So we can go down underneath here, 
create ourselves a actual form element. Uh, it does need a ref and we'll show you why in just a second. So we'll call it comment form as well as a class name of comment dash form inside of that input with the type of text, a ref of author folder. Same goes for comment. Finally, I need an input with the type of submit, but I'm also just going to make that hidden just because we need a submit button there in order for the enter key to work to hit enter uh, and for the form to submit itself. But we actually don't want to see it because uh, we're allowing your user just to hit enter. So I'm going to add that hidden attribute to it, which will hide it entirely.